Hello adventurers, my name is Diogo Guerra and this is Off-Road Of Course. I don't want my channel to be just a dude riding around looking for trouble, I also want to share my experiences and knowledge. And because almost... There is one particular question that millions of my followers have been repeatedly and tirelessly asked along the years. How to install a modern upside down fork on an older bike that is using a conventional fork system? In case you have no idea what I'm talking about, this is what I mean by conventional forks. It's one where the slider is here on the bottom, this thick part, and then inside this rubber tube you have this pipe that extends all the way up to the triple clamp. On an upside down fork you have the slider, the thick part, here on the top connected to the triple clamp, and then on the bottom you have the extension that goes all the way down to the wheel. But why would you want these upside down or USD forks on your bike? To put it simply, because they are usually much more evolved than the conventional ones. And also because they allow to be adjusted and tuned. This whole front is from a 2006 KTM 450, so it's not even that modern. But it's way more technologically advanced than the original conventional system. And this one also allows me to regulate the rebound here in the top and the compression here in the bottom. If I had even more recent suspensions, they would probably have a knob somewhere for me to regulate the preload. These adjustments are really important. To have the best suspensions in the world and not regulating them properly is as useless as riding around in Europe with an extra pair of tires. But that's a topic for another video. Nevertheless, if you want to learn more about suspension technology, don't forget to watch this video from a fellow YouTuber called Steps to Podium. Now let's learn how to install one of these babies on your motorcycle. First step is to buy a complete front from a donor bike. And the front includes the triple clamp, both legs, the wheel, and also the complete brake system. And that includes the disc, the caliper, and also the brake pump. Second step, after you remove your old, ugly, conventional suspension, is to make sure your new triple clamp will be compatible with the motorcycle. For that, you need to use the same steering head tube, this pipe here, remove it from the old suspension and put it in the new triple clamp. For that, you might need the help of a lathe worker or a metal worker, because these things are hard pressed into the clamps and so you need an hydraulic press to take them out. And also because they may not have the same diameter, you will need to machine some sort of spacer so the old steering head pipe fits snugly into the new triple clamp. Third step is to devise some sort of stopper that limits your steering. Because if you don't do that, the stopper will be the leg of the suspension hitting here inside the frame or out here on the navigation tower. And that's no bueno. And that's it, it's ready to install. But wait, wait, before you go and spend all your money in new parts and donations to my PayPal, please consider the following advices. First, Google it. I'm pretty sure that some guy somewhere on some forum has done exactly the same mod on a motorcycle just like yours. Use his experience. Second, the new suspension should have the same size and the same wheel travel as the original ones. Modifying the bike's height or weight distribution will change dramatically the way it behaves. Third, once you buy the new suspension, make sure you contact the suspension expert. He will help you find new springs for your bike's weight and also to tune and service the new forks. Fourth, USD forks are much wider in the top than the conventional ones. So before you buy all this, make sure you have enough space between your navigation tower, your frame and also your fuel tank for the suspension to move around. It is expected to lose a little bit of steering angle when you change to the USD system, so if you feel that you are losing too much, consider using the 43mm legs instead of the 48mm like the ones I have. Number 5. Usually older bikes measure speed using this mechanism on a front wheel. So when you change the wheel, you'll probably lose the ability to measure speed. A possible solution for this is to buy a digital speedometer with a digital pickup. 
6. If all of this is just two balls deep for you, remember that you can simply upgrade your original fork. Some aftermarket brands sell these cartridges that go inside the original forks and not only they update them, but they also make them adjustable. That's probably the easiest way to improve your suspension. 7. Last but not least, please consider that these changes can be dangerous if not done properly and they also might be illegal in your country. So please do this, or don't, at your own risk. I'm just sharing something I did and worked for me. If you found this video useful, don't forget to like it and to share it. And if you want to see more of me, please subscribe and hit the bell button. See you guys next week.